you'll hear these four voices, but only one is God. These four voices will be speaking to you. Now, if we look at the garden story where everything started, we will see four voices. We see our own voice. We see Adam speaking, Eve speaking. We see God's voice. God was speaking to Adam and then God was speaking to Adam and to Eve and to the snake. We see the devil speaking, the snake speaking, and we see Eve speaking to Adam and telling him to do something. In this case, in Genesis 3, it was contrary to God's Word. I want you to notice one thing. In the midst of voices in this world, God still speaks. In Hebrews chapter 3 verses 7 through 19, we see that Holy Spirit says, if today you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. Matthew 4, 4, Jesus says that men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus didn't just say every word that proceeded, but proceeds, meaning God still speaks today. Jesus also tells us that the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. Like, I don't have sheep, but I have a dog, Jacko. Jacko can recognize my voice. He also knows certain words like a treat, a snack, or some other uh, words that he just knows what that means. Sit. He knows my voice. He can distinguish my voice and he knows these commands and he responds to them. Now, our Father, He speaks. Our Shepherd, He speaks. And many times what happens is the enemy confuses people by letting them not discern God's voice and they heed wrong voices in their life. Listen to me very carefully. The secret of your spiritual life is not necessarily in whose voice you hear, but whose voice you heed, obey, act upon. In Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 and 2 and pretty much the whole Deuteronomy 28, God says if we obey His voice and keep His commands, He will pour out a blessing. If we do not obey His voice and do not keep His commands, there will be a curse that will come. Now I want you to notice that God doesn't bless us for hearing His voice. God blesses us for obeying His voice. Adam heard the voice of a serpent in the garden. Jesus heard the voice of the devil in the wilderness. The outcome from the first man and the second man, first Adam and the last Adam, wasn't the voice they heard. It was the voice they obeyed. But before you act on God's voice, you have to know His voice, distinguish His voice. One of the best things we must understand about the voice of God. And I'll give you some practical things to help you distinguish between all these voices. God's voice always aligns with Scripture while other voices can contradict it. Eve contradicted God's voice and serpent contradicted God's voice. But God's voice aligns with God's Word. And so we must understand that. God doesn't speak contrary to His Word. The second thing I want you to know about God's voice is it's divine in nature because God is divine being. All other voices a lot of times can come from experiences, traumas, circumstances. Demonic voices, they come, their source is demons. God's voice is divine. The third thing I want you to know about God's voice is there is a consistency about it. People's voices, they change, they fluctuate. Our own thoughts, they can fluctuate. People change and sometimes Satan can come say one thing, then he says another thing and like Satan came to Jesus and said, you know, um, are you truly the Son of God? And then he quotes the scripture and you can see this no consistency there and constantly trying to bombard to make Jesus, you know, get away from obeying the Father. And that's the difference between God's voice is there's a sense of consistency about it versus the voice, our voice, the voice of people and the Satan's voice. The fourth thing I want you to know about God's voice is that God's voice is according to God's will. Whether our voice, other people's voices or the devil's voice, it's usually a reflection of the state of the person or if it's Satan, it's a reflection of his own nature, but it's not in alignment with God's will. The Bible tells us that we must not conform to this world but be transformed by the renewing of 
our mind that we might prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God is. God is always speaking in the way that reflects His nature, that reflects His will. It doesn't contradict His character. God's voice doesn't necessarily reflect your state, circumstances or your being. It reflects His being. He speaks from Himself into your world and that's a big distinction. Another one, the big difference is that God's voice requires faith. To hear God's voice requires faith. When it comes to other people, all you have to do to hear other people's voices is open your ears. To hear the devil's voice, it, it doesn't require a lot. Honestly, just go through life and you will hear the devil's voice. It contradicts God's voice. That's usually how you know it's the devil's voice. It doesn't require faith. It really manipulates your feelings a lot of times. It could come in to deceive you. It's not reliable. But God's voice requires faith. When it comes to your emotions, on the other hand, my emotions, it doesn't require faith. I just need to manage my emotions through self-awareness. There's no faith required. I just need to steward them and become aware of them. God's voice isn't like that. It does require faith. Another Thing that I love about God's voice is that it has God's backing, God's support. People's voice, the devil's voice, doesn't have a supernatural providence. Now the devil's voice will have supernatural problems. People's voice will not have supernatural providence. Sometimes you'll have a form of manipulation, a form of anxiety, a form of fear or hype, but there is no supernatural backing. In John 10 verse 4 it says, to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. I love this. The shepherd leads them out and he calls them by name. You know what that means? This simply means that our shepherd, he doesn't just speak over a cell phone. He speaks close to us and he leads us. There is a, a providence. There is a support. There is a guidance that we experience when God's voice speaks. That's how you can distinguish between your voice, people's voice, the devil's voice. When the devil speaks, a lot of times there's supernatural problems. You kind of notice it. There's a turbulence. There's no peace. And we'll mention the devil's voice in just a moment. But God's voice has a supernatural providence. And one more thing about God's voice that I think is very important is God whispers more than He yells or even speaks. It does speak but a lot of times it's in whispers. In 1 Kings 19 12 we see after the earthquake a fire but the Lord was not in the fire and after the fire a still small voice. God's voice is a still small voice. This impulse of the voice of God is like a dove, a gentle and we tend to underestimate it. You know we have to understand that the Holy Spirit speaks. God speaks today and a lot of times it will not come in an audible form. It will come in a quiet, still, small voice. Now for those of us who want to learn a little bit more about the devil's voice and God's voice, here are just a few practical things to keep in mind. God's voice will calm you. Satan's voice will obsess you. God's voice will comfort you. Satan's voice will worry you. God's voice will convict. Satan's voice will condemn. God's voice will encourage you. Satan's voice will bring discouragement. God's voice will enlighten you. Satan's voice will confuse you. God's voice will lead. Satan's voice will push. God's voice will reassure. Satan's voice will frighten you. God's voice will still you. Satan's voice will rush you. So how do you learn to discern God's voice better? Remember, we need to be near God to hear God. Secondly, we must be filled with His Word to hear His voice. Thirdly, we must lower the noise in our life to hear His voice in our spirit. And lastly, we must obey the last thing He said before expecting Him to give us new instruction or new direction. I hope that these truths will help you to learn to hear the voice of the Lord better. You are a born-again Christian. Seeing the kingdom of God, living in the kingdom of God is part of your inheritance. Knowing the Lord's voice, His word and His presence is part of being in His family. It's a privilege that we have as children. May we hear His voice and may we heed His voice in our life. Thank you for watching this video. And let me know in the comments below any other suggestions 
tips that you have discerned or learned in your journey with Christ on how to hear God's voice better. God bless you.